You're always kind of figuring out as you go along. Yeah. It's kind of like jazz with baking. It's jazz, but with flour. Or jazz baking. What's up, guys? Today, we are going to make amazing pancakes with Kat McNamara. Kat, come on in here. Hello. This is such an amazing woman. She's such a baddie. <laughs> She's in this kitchen. We're about to mix it up with some amazing pancakes. Thank you for coming. Thank Actually, you for having me. We got a like, booty bump. Boop. It's a booty bump because um, we can't hug. Right. We decided we were going to make <laughs> these amazing pancakes because of your character in Shadowhunters, which I don't know if you noticed, but I'm trying. Trying. You are. I'm trying. It's See, I almost wore a leather jacket, and I went, no, I'm gonna switch it up. Yes. This, but I should have. No, you look so good in red. Thank you look you. good in all colors. <laughs> oh, anyway, your hair. It's not red. No. It's been many different colors. It's gorgeous. Fans of of cats must know that in the book, your character liked coconut pancakes. Yes, because in the book series, there was a restaurant called Takis that was, I believe, a Chinese restaurant, and that's where all the werewolves got food from. So <laughs> she used to always order coconut pancakes, right. and so now we're making a sort of play on that. Absolutely, let's get started. We've got our gluten-free flour, we've got milk, we've got brown sugar, looks like some maraschino cherries. How you say it? I believe Mar so. Maraschino, pineapple, vanilla extract, and our eggs, let's make some. I can't wait to eat these, I'm, I'm like kinda, kinda craving some pancakes. Yeah, it's been a recipe I've wanted to try for a while, yes. so I'm glad we have the opportunity. All right, so first things first, let's go ahead and crack the eggs. Okay, let's crack into it. Oh. I grew up baking as a kid. Okay. So any kind of cooking, baking, anything like this, it's been my therapy in the last year that we've all been through. <laughs> I've done this thing that I like to call kind of reverse trick-or-treating. Okay. This year where in order to have an excuse to get out of my house and uh -huh. drive around LA, I bake a bunch and then put it all in my car and drop it at the end of my friend's driveway. So I'm just gonna go, hello. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pour in the milk. Yes. Kat, I have many things to ask you, starting with the fact that you got your high school diploma at 14. I did. <laughs> Lady boss. I'm a huge nerd. I've, I've always loved learning. I had this amazing preschool teacher named Miss Vicky, mm -hmm. who saw that I had this sort of love for learning mm -hmm. and this veracity for knowledge, mm -hmm. and she fostered that. Between her and the rest of my family, learning was always a journey of discovery and never a chore. Yeah. So I really had a fantastic relationship with like school and with learning and all of these things, and mm -hmm. that only continued, so. Okay, so you got your high school diploma at 14, and then by 15, you were on Broadway. I don't know if a lot of people know this about you. <laughs> yeah, I did a, a little night music on Broadway for a year, and it completely changed my life. Really? How? It got me out of Kansas City. Okay. I grew up in Kansas City. I never thought I'd leave, and mm -hmm. last minute thing, I ended mm -hmm. up with a, an audition for a Broadway show. And How? A later, How did that happen from Kansas City? <laughs> a woman I was working with ended up in the same show, and they okay. needed an immediate replacement. So oh, because you were working in Kansas City, you were working a lot. Yeah, there's okay. a huge professional theater community there. Oh, I and, did not know that. Oh, it's fantastic. Oh, wow. I, I always say I was raised artistically in the Kansas mm -hmm. City theater community because it's a group of artists that do it for the love of it. Okay. And everybody does every job, and there's no ego in it, oh, and everybody awesome. works really hard. That's so cool. And so that's where I learned my work ethic. Okay. And I said, I don't think I'll ever have another opportunity to audition for a Broadway show. Yeah. So I went. I'd never been to New York before in my life. Oh, wow. And a week later, I was living there working on the show. Yes, girl! <laughs> Another lady boss moment in Kat McNamara's career, okay? So Catherine Zeta-Jones played my mom and yeah. Angela Lansbury played my grandmother. Oh my God. And they left the show about six months in and Bernadette Peters and Elaine Stritch came in to, oh, I know to take Stritch. over the show. I okay. love Elaine Stritch R. I. P. with Elaine every Str fiber of my being. She actually took me to set with her. Did she? She really took me under her wing. Aww. And one day I was in her dressing room and she goes, you, you know, on Monday I'm going to 30 Rock and you're going to come with me and you're going to learn things. <laughs> and I went, okay, <laughs> Elaine, sure, why not? I'd love to. That's amazing. She was so, so kind. Okay, guys, so we decided that this batter is a little too thick. When you work with gluten-free flours, they're a little different, right, when you're baking with them? Every flour, every sugar, everything you use is a little bit different. Right. And every time you bake, every oven's a little different. That's true. And so it's always kind of, I travel a lot in okay. a normal world, so every oven I use is a little bit different. You're always kind of figuring out as you go along. Yeah. It's kind of like jazz with baking. It's jazz, but with flour. Jazz baking. I am from Kansas City. It's all that jazz. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We want to make sure that it's not too thick. Yeah, let's try that. Okay. This is definitely a better texture. It is. We did add a little bit more milk. Well, and the other thing with gluten-free flour is you don't want to mix it too much because sometimes then it can get tacky and super rubbery almost. Ooh. So I think we're good to just experiment. All right. We are greasing the pan with butter. I like a lot of butter. 
You like? I do too. Talk to me about stunts. Like, when did you start approaching stunts? When I started Shadowhunters. Had you read the book? Had you been aware of it? During the audition process, I started reading the books. And Smart. I'd, I'd finished them all by the time season one came out. But it was really fantastic. And as far as the stunts go, I had the most amazing time. You know, I'd never held a sword. I didn't know how to throw a punch when I started the show. We had incredible stunt coordinators that taught me. They used to train me three to five times a week oh, wow. in martial arts, in weapons work, in boxing, and all of these things. And we had an incredible fitness trainer as well that yeah. worked, you know, sort of the muscle and cardio side yeah, of things yeah. so that we had all the skills we needed. Wow. They were so willing that those of us who wanted to do stunts and yeah. wanted to kind of really put in the work and the time and train, yeah. they did it. And by mid-season two, I was doing most of my own fighting and stunts. What is your favorite type of martial art? I love boxing. That's okay. kind of my favorite. It's not technically a martial art, but... It's probably what I trained in the most. Do you still box? I do, yeah, That's yeah. It's amazing. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put um, our pineapple on it. Twilight was already out, way out, mm -hmm. when Shadowhunters started. Because I feel like there were um, a lot of Twilight vibes with Shadowhunters. It was a great series because it, it sort of existed in a similar way to Twilight in that everything exists in the world in which we live. Every All the legends are true was sort mm. of the tagline for the show. So every kind that. of monster, creature, demon, everything that goes bump in the night exists. So it's very much a pineapple upside down cake kind of vibe, right? Absolutely. This is gonna be really tasty. Let's talk about the stand. I'm a huge Stephen King fan. I've yes. been my whole life. And I'm so thrilled to be a part of the new miniseries on CBS All Access. I am thrilled for you because I want to see you everywhere. I am a huge, huge fan of yours, Kat. <laughs> well, this is a very different character. She is quite vile. And I, I, I Yes. Yeah. She's sort of a, an erratic Tinkerbell of the apocalypse, as it were. Yeah. Was that in the breakdown when you got the, or did you come up no, with it? No, I came up You should just write. <laughs> you should write for all your shows. But it's, uh, it's definitely a character, you know, I love being a chameleon and playing different characters, yeah. but I always say, I, I've been telling people, don't be a Julie. Her name's Julie. I say, don't be a Julie. She's not the example of who to be in the apocalypse. Got so we it. find her, she's in a warehouse by herself. Got it. In a prom dress with a shotgun <gasps> running around. Oh my God. Wreaking havoc. I love it. Well, there you go, guys. Mm -hmm. What more could you want from this woman? <laughs> Should I do it? Go Here? for it. Okay. <laughs> no take back, <laughs> All right. Look at that. We did it. You did it. Brilliant flip. Thank you. I've done Comic Cons because of Kim Possible, but I'm guessing you probably have done a, your share of Comic Cons. I love Comic Cons. Okay. Can you please tell me some fun Comic Con stories? Craziest fan experience at a Comic Con? I've been really lucky. The, the Shadow Hunters fandom and the Arrow fandom, they are the best yeah. and they're so welcoming and you know the shadow hunters folks i've been with for so long now they're their family yeah not only the cast but the fandom has gone beyond the show and yeah. beyond our characters and created this amazing community of love and acceptance awesome. one of my favorite experiences we were at a comic con in brussels uh-huh and it was just a shadow hunters comic con so there were probably six or eight of us cast members and we just ran amok we crash each other's panels. It's, yeah. You know, we're all we're family, That's so it's fun. just it's fun. That's a lot of fun. But in the closing ceremony, we were all up saying thank you and thanking the staff and the people that ran it and all of that. And suddenly the lights went down. Oh. All of the fans pulled out these red heart balloons from under their chairs and started singing the theme song to the show. Oh. And we had just found out our final season had just finished airing, oh. and it was such an amazing thing to think that these people from all over the world had organized and thought to do something to surprise us. Yeah, I'm actually getting goosebumps. Look at that. And all of That's us so instantly sweet. burst into tears. It was, I have videos of it. It was one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. And so just a big thank you for, for that and for all the fun memories. So you love what you do. I do. You wouldn't do anything else? If you could do anything other than be an amazing, famous actress, <laughs> what would you want? What would you do? I originally wanted to be an economist. Okay. Yeah. You could invest my money. That's what I thought I was going to do. That's actually what I went to school for. Oh my god. What I went to university for was for business and, and economics, and that's what I thought I was going to do. I wanted to go into developmental economics and mm -hmm. explore that field, and then I became an actor. There you go. Oh my gosh, that oh, looks really good. Wow. That looks really good. It really does. And it looks good. Yours works sometimes. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> exactly. Well, let's eat these guys. These look really good to me. I'm going to go ahead and pour some syrup. You already have yours? I have syrup. I have oh, been syruped. My gosh. This is so decadent. I'm I didn't excited. realize how decadent this was going to be. You know, when you can make breakfast a celebration, you know you're going to have a good day. Yes. Right? All right. Lady Boss breakfast with Kat <laughs> McNamara. Let's try this. Oh, wow. It can't be bad. There's too many good Cheers. things going for it. Cheers. Mm. Mm. 
Wow. It's really interesting because the pineapple adds such a different flavor profile. That's right. Because I've had blueberry pancakes. Okay. Like banana pancakes and things like that. But this is... This is next level. It's like fresh in a way. Oh, I'm here for this. You guys, you have to try this out and let us know what you think. I just want to thank you very much for coming on the show. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Please watch her on uh, The Stand as well as all of the other things. Where are you, Instagram and? Yeah, Instagram, cat.mcnamara, <laughs> Twitter, cat underscore McNamara. Um, few things coming up. Actually, I filmed a movie right before the beginning of 2020 with my Shadowhunters co-star, Matt Daddario, mm -hmm. called Push. It's a story about four people in three really messed up relationships. It should be coming out next year, and also Untitled Horror Movie with our Mutual friends. That's right, Luke, Luke Baines. Baines. What's up, Luke? Yeah, Luke Baines and Nick Simon, they wrote this movie at the beginning of quarantine and we shot it entirely over Zoom. Okay, you guys gotta go check that out for sure, 100%. Thank you so much. This was so much fun and very tasty recipe. Please try it, you guys. Subscribe, hit notifications. Go follow Kat everywhere that Kat is, which is everywhere. And <laughs> have a great day. Thank you. Thank Mwah. you.